before I review uh, the uh, controversial sequel to uh, one of my top three MCU movies, uh, uh, let me uh, show you uh, my encounter with a actual Black Panther uh, earlier this month uh, as a big cat sanctuary. Isn't she beautiful? Black Panther Wakanda Forever, directed once again by Ryan Coogler, who also directed the first Black Panther and is the uh, 2022 sequel to uh, one of the best Marvel and superhero movies ever made in general, as well as the 30th MCU installment uh, overall. Damn, I mean, it took them 14 years to get to 30 movies. Uh, but so uh, they finally did it, and as well as the third Marvel movie we've got in 2022, and the last superhero movie of 2022, so Wakanda Forever tells the story taking place after the events of uh, Avengers Endgame, where Jatala uh, tragically uh, dies of a disease uh, that Tashiri was unable to cure after Killmonger burnt, uh, the, burnt the plants that uh, could have cured him. So uh, Shuri uh, and uh, her mother, the Queen, and Okoye and uh, Naki uh, uh, struggle to uh, uh, protect uh, uh, Wakanda without uh, Ch Chitala, as uh, it turns out uh, a, a different kingdom uh, has a vibranium led by the mutants uh, Namor as he proposes a alliance uh, with uh, Wakanda and uh, and wants uh, uh, this uh, teenage girl scientist uh, from the US, Ironheart uh, Dez. Uh, so uh, Shuri needs to protect Ironheart and uh, somehow make peace with Namor. You guys all know how much I freaking adore uh, the first Black Panther. That uh, is still not only my favourite Ryan Coogler movie, uh, not only my second favourite MCU movie to this day, but uh, it's uh, one of the uh, single greatest uh, superhero movies uh, of, of all time, and, and deservedly the first comic book movie to receive a Best Picture nomination. I mean, if, uh, if that uh, uh, isn't revolutionising the superhero genre, I, I don't know what is. Uh, and a part of what's uh, made her the first Black Panther, well, uh, so uh, groundbreaking, was Chadwick Boseman as a Chitala. I mean, he, he is still, to me, uh, the uh, definitive Black Panther and uh, can never be replaced. And uh, we all know uh, 2020 uh, was uh, the uh, literal uh, worst year ever, and that year was... Uh, full of grief and loss, particularly for me and my family, and to add to the losses of that year, the, the most heartbreaking celebrity death of them all that, that year was Chadwick Boseman in August 2020. It was heartbreaking to hear the unthinkable news that he had lost his life uh, to cancer uh, far too young at just 43. So initially after hearing about his passing, I was like, no, Marvel, do not make Black Panther 2 without Chadwick, as I initially thought that uh, Marvel making a Black Panther sequel anyway just for uh, money would be disrespecting his memory, like how Blake Edwards disrespected Peter Sellers' memory uh, when he continued the Pink Panther franchise without uh, its lead actor. <laughs> But uh, my apologies for putting this movie as my number one least anticipated movie for 2022. I was out of order to do that because I should not have underestimated Ryan Coogler. He is a smarter filmmaker than that and far more sophisticated. So as you can tell he did not make the sequel just for money. You can tell he made it to honour Chadwick and, uh, and to, well, 
and this movie was needed in in some sense to show how the Wakanda characters would cope well with, without Jatala. This was the hardest movie that Ryan Coogler ever had to make. He even confirmed making this movie about Chadwick was the hardest thing he's ever done. But over time I did grow to accept that Chadwick was not going to be in it and I did grow to give this movie uh, a chance. Uh, and as for my thoughts on Wakanda Forever, this is a perfectly fine uh, follow-up. But it's aimed to patch on the first Black Panther, and I don't see this being Best Picture nominated like the first one was. But this sequel did move me in part, so I'm not going to lie, and I can see why people are blown away and completely and utterly moved by, by this uh, film, as uh, it's certainly the most emotional cinema experience uh, you will have uh, this year. The, uh, the true uh, stars of this movie would have to be Latita Wright as Shiri, uh, as uh, the new Black Panther, and Angela Bassett as the Queen. Latita Wright, she's outstanding as Shiri here. Shiri was my favourite character in the first Black Panther, and she continues to be my favourite Black Panther character here. And uh, yeah, she goes on a real journey of grief and a stepping up to uh, become, well, Wakanda's uh, new, new uh, uh, leader and a new Black Panther after lo losing her brother. Uh, and, uh, I mean, uh, it took it took forever for her to put on the suits, uh, surprisingly. Uh, so there is, sadly, a lack of Black Panther action here. But when she does... Uh, uh, put on the suit, so it is a well-earned moment, and uh, uh, Angela Bassett as the Queen, if she uh, isn't nominated for uh, Best uh, Supporting Actress, uh, then uh, the Oscars uh, should be cancelled, uh, because, uh, yeah, uh, she's she's going to get a nominee in my Harry Awards, uh, you, you can be sure of that, I mean, particularly in the scene where she robs a Koye of her, of her duties, and uh, and the movies, uh, the way the movie honours Chadwick uh, is, uh, well, it is it, it honours Chadwick in the best way it could have possibly done. So thank you, Ryan Coogler. Uh, I mean, I can understand why they killed off Jatala uh, through a disease, because Chadwick, uh, well, died of cancer in, in real life, and, uh, and Jatala's funeral in the opening, I mean, how could you not be crying your eyes out at that, um, and and uh, the opening logos uh, that showed uh, uh, photos of Chadwick and the black screen with no music, that was simply perfect, and the soundtrack uh, will uh, uh, inevitably tug at your heartstrings, uh, I mean, especially the end credits song by Rihanna, Lift uh, Me Up. But here's why Wakanda Forever is not the absolute masterpiece that the first uh, Black Panther was. Uh, for, for one thing, I think uh, the main antagonist, Namor, is uh, far weaker than uh, Killmonger from the first film. Obviously, Michael B. Jordan is a uh, better actor than uh, the actor they got so for Namor, because uh, Namor, I'm sorry, I don't get the love for him. I don't get why everybody's calling him one of the go-to Marvel antagonists. He, he is uh, uh, r rather dull, uh, and, uh, and and his backstory was far more uh, convoluted, and uh, and his motivation was not nearly as compelling as 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 Killmonger's. And the underwater birth scene in the trailer, that's, that was Namor's mother giving birth to him in a flashback. But, uh, I mean, but it, but it makes no sense why Namor would, would have, would have quarrel with Shiri. Because she, what does she ever do to him? There's no, uh, real, uh, protagonist and antagonist rivalry in, in this film. Uh, but, and, I mean, at least with Killmonger, you could see why his, he had pure hatred for Jatala because Jatala's father killed his father. So you could see why uh, Killmonger just uh, loathed uh, his cousin and wanted to take the throne uh, for, for his own. Uh, but Namor is just not threatening enough to be a villain because his goal is for an, an alliance between the Wakandians and uh, the, the mutants. And and if, 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 
he only declares war on Wakanda if they refuse. I'm sorry, but uh, he's more of a peacemaker than a villain. And and uh, to add to that, his design looks ridiculous. But uh, like uh, the wings on his feet, he looks like freaking Hermes uh, from fr from a Greek mythology. And uh, and it, his underwater uh, sissy. Uh, you, and his blue-skinned army, you, you could see that Sir Disney and Marvel took inspiration from not only Aquaman, but Avatar The Way of Water when designing them all. And, but, uh, but the underwater effects here are not cutting edge like they were in Aquaman. Lake Bell has a cameo in, in this movie, like in the scene where Namor and his goons are raid uh, the ship. Uh, uh, I, I mean, it really sucks that Lake Bell wasn't well, a major character, because as Lake Bell's awesome, why would you not use her more? And uh, uh, also, uh, Martin Freeman's character, uh, uh, well, did not need to return in this film. You want to know why he's here? Because he was in the first movie, but his subplot with him, you know, uh, interacting with his uh, former wife again it did not connect with the overall narrative at all so if there are any scenes that could have been a cut to, to trim this movie down it would be uh, his scenes and uh, uh and also nakia chitala's wife uh, she's surprisingly underused here uh, considering she's you know the wife of the character this movie's paying tribute to you i mean i i it surprisingly takes her like an like an hour or so to even show up in the movie. I would have loved her to have been in uh, the uh, chase scene where Shiri and Okoye are uh, protecting uh, uh, Ironheart from uh, uh, from uh, uh, Namor's uh, cronies. Uh, I mean, Shiri wouldn't have been captured if uh, Nakia was there. Oh, and talking of Ironheart, so she would be one other positive I have for this movie. I mean, I I, I think she's the most underrated character here. She, uh, well, uh, provided uh, the most hilarious parts of a movie that uh, felt uh, extremely gloomy. The best scene with Nakia in the movie was the mid credit scene where she shows Shuri her nep her son, and... Uh, and Shuri's nephew, and they named him Jatala, of course, uh, after uh, his father, which uh, was beautiful. So I don't think the Queen uh, should have uh, died in this movie or whatsoever. That was uh, such a forced uh, decision. I mean, come on, we've already had to sit through one funeral and had one loss. You're making us sit through another? I don't think we can take any more losses, and neither can poor Shuri. Now, She's just lost her entire family. Come on, at least let her ha have her mother. And want, weren't you all surprised that she didn't uh, kill Namor at the end? After what Namor did to her mother, you'd think she would uh, r run him through her with, with his spear. Uh, uh, but uh, I understand it was going for the message, uh, revenge is wrong. So the most uh, uh, glaring flaw with this movie is uh, its pacing and uh, its, its tedious running time. I mean, why make this movie 30 minutes longer than the first Black Panther? It's far too long. And and it's and it's uh, certainly uh, isn't as action packed. So the pacing's god awful. The first Black Panther had flawless pacing and uh, was uh, action from beginning to end. I I don't, so there's no excuse for Wakanda Forever to uh, uh, not have as good pacing. When we do get action, it is uh, passable, like, uh, well, Namor's assault on Wakanda and the final battle uh, 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 at uh, sea uh, in, uh, but, uh, but so I would uh, take the action of the first movie over the action in this movie for sure, and uh, everybody is uh, saying, oh, Wakanda Forever has uh, improved CGI from the first film. I have the polar opposite opinion. I I think the rhinos uh, and, and the climactic fight between Chitala and Killmonger uh, by uh, the Wakandian train look far uh, more gorgeous than everybody says and don't look like a PS2 game. 
Heck, I thought Namor's wings looked far fainter in comparison. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this sequel improves nothing over the original Black Panther. Uh, so overall, yeah, uh, a w Wakanda Forever is not one of the best MCU sequels. Uh, like, it's not another uh, Winter Soldier, it's not another Civil War. It's way better than Iron Man 2, and uh, you can uh, see that everybody involved, uh, well, uh, were doing their best to make this movie work, and and it is uh, worth seeing to, to say one last uh, goodbye uh, to Chadwick, but so uh, here's why uh, uh, I would recommend the first Black Panther far more. It's 30 minutes short, so, so you'll save some time. It has a far superior script, a uh, superior uh, villain, a uh, su superior pacing, and, uh, and, and superior everything. I give Black Panther Wakanda Forever three stars out of five. Good sequel. Thank you, uh, uh, Ryan Coogler and Marvel Studios, uh, uh, for, uh, paying the most beautiful uh, tribute uh, to a uh, Chadwick uh, that uh, you uh, possibly could. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, and that's it for Phase 4 of uh, On to Phase 5, which will begin in 2023 uh, with uh, my most anticipated movie of uh, Phase 5, uh, The Marvels. Uh, well, I love you guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. What are your thoughts on Wakanda Forever? Are you with me and uh, enjoyed it but found it inferior to the first Black Panther? Or are you in the minority and favour Wakanda Forever over uh, the first film? Uh, please comment and let me know. Please like this video and subscribe. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And I'll see you next time uh, when I uh, rank uh, the superhero movies of 2022 as well as review uh, the Enchanted sequel Disenchanted. And remember, movies are us. Bye, guys.